Hey everyone, here's a quick heads up. The Agile Online Summit is coming soon. You can get all the details at uh, bit.ly forward slash Agile Online Summit 24. Yes, it's all lowercase, all one word. That's bit.ly forward slash Agile Online Summit 24. Stick with us till the end of the episode to know the dates, the tracks, and some surprises we have ready for you. But for now, let's dive into today's episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Team Tuesday this week with Dominika Bula. Hey, Dominika, welcome back. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you again. So Tuesday is Team Day here on the podcast, of course, and we'll talk about the team in a second. But first, share with us. What's the book that most influenced you in your career as a Scrum Master? So I would say it's a bitsy, tiny book, 100 pages, um, wrote by Pratik Sin and Daniel Vacanti, and that is called Scrum Pocket Guide. And it's short. You can basically read this over one night if you focus enough and you learn a lot because you learn how to incorporate a Kanban as a strategy for optimizing flow and this can work with any other practice you are using on the daily basis, specifically with the Scrum if you are a Scrum Master. And it really centers you around defining what is the value for your team and understanding where the ownership of the team starts and when the final handover happens how the workflow looks like, and then it dives in into optimizing and agreeing and discussing how do we handle all of the work items and what kind of expectations do we want to create as a um, group. This is definitely must read for anybody who has a basic idea of what the Kanban is, but would like to learn more and start practicing having this conversation with the teams on the daily basis. So would you say that this is a a good book for those that are already curious and want to understand how bringing Kanban could help their existing Scrum team? Yes, and for anybody to go back to it and reread, because even though this is a short book, reading it occasionally is a good refresher and it's very condensed with the information. There is no fluff around it and it really shows you on the specific examples of how can you make a difference and being a difference around the transparency of your process and creating a shared understanding for a team. How can we work together to move things forward? Absolutely. So check it out, Scrum Pocket Guide. Uh, I'll put the link in the show notes for sure to make no, sure that... It's a Kanban Pocket Guide. Sorry, Kanban Pocket <laughs> yeah, Guide. Yeah. My mistake. Kanban Pocket Guide. Yeah. Uh, and I'll put the link in the show notes to make sure that everybody can find it easily. Yeah. So, Dominika, uh, we also want to talk about teams because, as you just talked about, understanding our role within the team, understanding how to create transparency, like these are all things that we do in order to be able to help teams. But sometimes teams create their own problems. And this is a story we want to hear. We want to hear a story of a team, you know, give us a little bit of context so you know what kind of team, how big, etc. But then walk us through how those little behaviors within the team kind of developed over time and became a problem. So I would say that one of the things that it's like a, a snow a roll bowling that from the snowflake becomes the avalanche is this that we grow, right? And there, are sc- there is a scaling going on in the company or naturally just the teams are getting bigger. And as we get new people on board, we don't always consider what would the good agree- work agreement look like between us. And we keep rolling on something that we pre- pre-agreed maybe with the folks who are already not a part of the team or um not that interested in the collaboration anymore because they move out or support uh, the team on the different level and then this is when the challenging happens because we don't have a shared understanding and alignment that everybody came here today to do the best can, they can you can. give us an example of when that happened in the team and and how it looked like from your perspective People are afraid to participate in the daily discussions or even not feeling comfortable uh, during the retrospectives. They don't feel that 
their voice matters at all because it has been already said that is how the team works and there is no need to waste my energy to share my opinions because they are not going to be heard anyway so I give up basically and then you kind of start having a dead wood within your team because you have that team for a reason. It's not because one person is super extra clever and drives everything forward. We are hired for a reason to collaborate together and everybody should bring their bit to make it super special, right? And then the actual magic happens. So when you think about that specific aspect of, you know, maybe there's a leader or a senior person within the team that just says, no, this is how we work. We don't need to discuss it. Just do it as, do it as I tell you, right? And, and, you know, there's new people coming in the team and there's always some churn, even if it's little, there's always some people coming in and going away. So then the new people coming in kind of hear this story that, okay, so I'm not allowed to voice my ideas because this is how we work and it shouldn't change. When you, as a scrum master, when you see this type of behavior, like what has worked for you in the past to address it? It works and it it, it has been working for a while to pair up with the other person. So when we talk specifically about upskilling and learning within the team from the day one when the new person joins we need to figure it out who is a pair of that person and who is the body and maybe there is a different body for the different things this is even better right so we rotate but we listen to that new person because that person comes with the perspective of a different process and different work experience most likely and they will bring a lot of value to the team so we ask them to write this down and they present the observations let's say at the end of the uh, probation period right uh, or on the retrospective if they see anything else uh, that could be viable to our current process and if they have any suggestions and this is where the role of the scrum master can help because we facilitate this discussion and make sure that all of the voices are being heard and included and once this person shares their perspective we can also ask the team what do they think about this and ask everybody in the round robin not one person so I believe that this is where we as scrum master come um, supporting the team, making sure that everybody naturally knows that they will be asked these questions and they will be asked to contribute. And let's say if they're less um, open to communicating verbally, we can also ask the person to, you know, just write down the ideas and the team members to comment on them if they see something um, comfortable um, or innovative or supporting the team flow. But, you know, these are the minor things and it really depends on what is the team set up and how the people can work. So you will approach this different with the different individuals. And also, you can or also agree what is our decision-making model as a team. This would be very important and review this when we have a newcomers. And how do we introduce the change? when it's needed and what needs involvement of our team and what can be done immediately when you update the workflow and update the documentation and then just tell people, hey, I made a minor tweak here. We agree that this is okay to improve. If we see something failing, please, uh, this, is, this is the change I made, right? So it's natural that this makes sense and everybody will be on board. Yeah, I totally agree with everything that you said. I would add to that, that it's also good practice to just have a recurring and uh, I don't know, depending on the frequency, uh, if it's a new team, maybe you need to do it more frequent and then an older team, maybe you do you do it less frequently, but you have like this deliberate review of the work agreement, right? And when you join a new team, you can ask, hey, what's your work agreement? What have you agreed on how you work? And that already creates that conversation, that first review conversation. And I'm pretty sure that even the people who seem the most skeptic about changing how the team works, when they finally deliberately look and read the work agreement, they themselves will have changes to propose. Yes, I agree. And sometimes there's a confusion between what is our work agreement and yes, we have a definition of done. 
And these are not the same things, right? And this is also a good point to explore. Are we clear what is our definition of done? Do we need a definition of ready? And do we know what it is? And where is our work agreement? In my experience, I often work with the teams uh, in the past, right? That uh, they were like, yeah, we have it. And I'm like, where is it? And they're like, hmm, in Confluence. And does anybody have a link? We don't know how to find it. <laughs> So, you know, it's the artifact that lives there somewhere next to the team, but should be living with the team. Should Not be living. next to the team, yes. Absolutely. Great point. Thank you for sharing that, Dominica. Hi there, Agile friends. Thank you for sticking around. So, as I was saying at the beginning of the show, on October 22nd this year, we will have the first day of the Agile Online Summit 2024. The summit will take place from October 22nd to 24th, so make sure you book your calendars as there will be loads of sessions for you to attend, including live QAs with the speakers, networking sessions and more. This year we're also organizing regular networking events online so that you get to talk and meet your peers before the summit even starts. So if you want to know more, check them out at uh, bit.ly forward slash Agile Online Summit 24. That's uh, all one word, all lowercase. That's bit.ly forward slash Agile Online Summit 24. You can sign up for a free ticket and get notified when those warm up events will be organized. So stay tuned. Now, regarding the summit, our opening keynote will be Marshall Goldsmith's exposition of a project he's been working on for a while, that's marshallgoldsmith.ai. And uh, Marshall is an author and also a leadership coach who sold over 3 million books worldwide and has been considered twice number one leadership thinker in the world by Thinker50. And you definitely don't want to miss that. If you want to know more about the tracks, here they are. We will have four tracks. The first track is Shift from Product to People. In this track, we will explore what we call the third wave of Agile adoption, exploring psychological safety, coaching techniques, and more to unlock your team's potential. In this track, you can learn to foster trust, encourage innovation, and build high-performing teams. Transform your approach and the future of Agile to be much more people-centric. The second track we have for you is value-centric product development. In this track, we will learn how to master product management and ownership by focusing on value. We will learn to identify, validate and deliver what customers truly need and dive into customer centric approaches, experimentation techniques and continuous market validation ideas. We have to accept that if Agile is to succeed, we have to become value centric and that's what we explore in this track. The next track is titled Agile Coaching Masterclass. We want to help take your coaching to the next level and transform team performance. Develop key Agile coaching skills, emphasizing people-centric and value-centric approaches in line with the previous tracks. And we will help you learn how to guide teams towards value focus and effectiveness. In this track, we want to help you unlock the potential of the individuals and the organizations you will be working with. After all, the future of Agile is coaching centric. And finally, the last track and definitely not the least is all about the future of Agile. Explore the trends shaping Agile's evolution. The previous three tracks do that as well. Discover real world success stories from innovative companies pushing the boundaries of what's possible today and learn how practitioners are evolving agile practices, gain insights in how to revolutionize your own approach. After all, the future of agile is here, so let's explore it. You will also have the opportunity to network with your peers, so get your ticket and join our Slack at bit.ly forward slash Agile Online Summit. That's all lowercase, all one word, bit.ly forward slash Agile Online Summit 24. As always, we have free tickets and the VIP tickets, so check them out. 
It will all be available at bit.ly forward slash Agile Online Summit 24. I'll see you on the conference floor.